Ryan with Miss Dog Geek here, and today we're working on a ne another antenna for the old QTH. Uh, and so, um, let me show you what I've got going on here and what we're going to experiment with. Alright, so there's my jack antenna pole, and it's got a wire going. Well, I think I've shown all this before on another video, but it's got a wire going to that pole down there at the end of the property up and over and then down to the pole at the other end of the property. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take another wire from that pole all the way across to the other corner of this building which is my office slash shack and of course my, my shack is actually like right here on the other side of this wall and so I'm going to be going around um, to the other side and running a cable in between these two doors, which is how I have my other cable going in, so I don't have to put any holes in the place because it's a rental. So I've got to figure out how I'm going to do that. And the uh, wire I'm going to be using is definitely an experiment. This is steel leader line from that I bought from Cabela's like, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 years ago <laughs> for like $10 for a thousand feet of this stuff. Um, I think it's a thousand feet or a hundred feet or whatever it is. It's way more than I need. Um, I've used a few feet of it, but I'm gonna use this. And so the first thing to do is get up to the pole. I'm not gonna video that because it's boring, but I'm just gonna put up a loop in the end and maybe something as a strain relief, and then uh, probably zip tie it to the pole um, so that uh, it'll stay up there. And probably put about a foot or two down from the other antenna so it doesn't get in the doesn't interfere in any way. So uh, I'm going to put that up and then we'll go from there. For, for a long time I've been wondering, why don't people use steel leader line as antenna wire? I mean, it's long, it's steel, which isn't the, probably the, the, the best velocity factor or whatever, but, you know, it should be pretty invisible in the air. You know, how come it's not a, the perfect solution? Why aren't hams around the world just flocking to this stuff? Because it's cheap and it won't corrode. and and I think I might have figured it out. And I do believe this is the reason. Now, this is my own doing, mind you. I this is not be this is not the steel leader line's fault. However, uh, I thought you know just like you could take a spool of rope or wire and kind of you know give it a little toss to unspool it a little bit and give you something to pull on. Um, it immediately did that. So my goal now. <laughs> is to uh, get enough wire out that I can use it for the antenna and then uh, well the rest of it will go over there into uh, that so yeah tangled steel leader line is the devil alright okie doke so I've got this wire attached at the top where there is a now a bird sitting on my pole that's a new one haven't seen that just noticed that they just landed there a second ago. That's interesting. Well, at least I know it's good for holding up a bird, I guess. Let's see if I can shake them loose with my new wire. Let's see, back up here. Off my, <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Off my antenna, jerk. Um, all right, now I've got it just long enough to meet this post here and, uh, and clear my gutters. So there we go. Uh, you can see it kind of Maybe kind of see it clearing the gutter there. So it'll be about f uh, four feet off the ground. So what I've got to do is attach this to something. And that something is this. This is the uh, 9 to 1 end fed ballon. And uh, it takes 450 ohms and turns it into 50 ohms impedance. And, of course, this is unfinished. It's not in an enclosure or anything, and it does need to be in an enclosure. Uh, this wire goes to the antenna. This one goes to a counterpoise of some sort, uh, if not the coax uh, itself. And, of course, we got the uh, RF connector here for the cable. Now, I haven't decided how I'm going to build this into something yet, but I do need to enclose this in something to try to keep it out of the rain, and uh, I need to... Um, give the antenna something to attach to so that I can maybe zip tie it to that post. That's probably my goal there. 
Um, and then I need to be able to tune with this because this does require a tuner. And right now my main tuner is, uh, well, I've got a tuner, an MFJ tuner on my uh, bench and I could use that and I might use that for testing, but um, I really want a field tuner that I can take. So I'm probably gonna be building a second uh, L match, uh, which will work fine for this. So um, I don't know if I have everything to build an L match right now, but we'll see. <laughs> so um, anyway, it's time to get this into an enclosure of sorts. And by the way, you can find this, uh, the, the construction plans for this, on the uh, EARCHI website. I'll link it below. I'll probably put a description just below here. I think that's the right acronym. But it's the, uh, the Hawaiian folks who put up the uh, emergency antenna um, website. And it's good stuff. I mean, this it may make it really easy to wind to this. I actually built this a couple years ago and tested it once and then never touched it again because I just I already have a system that works. So my next goal is to get this into some sort of enclosure, um, probably a very simple temporary um, enclosure. However, it does rain a whole lot here, like a whole lot. So I really have got to, in fact, I'll, I'll put it in fact, <laughs> to show you how much it rains here, um, we have a couple of ponds, we have uh, a river that goes through the valley. But in this following picture, 90% um, of the water you're going to see in it should not be there. Right, so um, you can imagine it does rain a whole bunch here. <laughs> so I've just got to keep this out of the rain. That's my main goal. So that's what I'm going to go for. All right, so I've made a decision to go ahead and go with the uh, coconut palm sugar container. I've also decided that I'm going to uh, just mount everything to this. It's not optimal because this, um, you know, it, it could, the things will be out in the open. Um, you know, the internals will be, will be taken care of, but, you know, there's going to be this going through the middle and then, um, I kind of ran out of hardware. I have like one wing nut and one bolt, but that's not really enough. Um, so I've got this kit that I bought on banggood.com. And, and you're going to hear me talk about banggood.com. I kind of like banggood.com, okay? Um, it's like AliExpress, but I think more reliable personally. But I've got this kit, and it's an ATX power supply uh, breakout adapter. Um, it's not a complete kit because it lacks like the, the resistor you're supposed to put in there to, to load up the 5 volt bus. Um, but it's mostly there. And I'm going to do this as a project at some point, but right now I'm going to rob um, these uh, jacks off of it because I, I think that'll really uh, be better on this project. I'm not going to need, like this board has, you know, all these 12 volts, 3 volts. I'm, I only really need 12 volt ground. So I'll do a couple of grounds and 12 volt. I might grab the five volt off of it, but I, this, this has more in it than I actually need. So I'm gonna steal these from it. And by the way, this was, uh, I think three and a half dollars. So <laughs> um, it's already paid for itself in that I have the hardware that I need. Um, so it's time to drill some holes in this. And so what I've got here is just a um, step, well, a step drill. And I had a drill. Yeah, I've got a drill bit in my drill. So put a hole in it. And I just shattered it. That's cool. I guess I'll just have to grab this other one I've got over here. Pretty sure it's the same thing. I've got another one that another one of these I've just got some parts in and don't really need the lid. So let's try this again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it upside down on my piece of paper and go slower. By the way, this is just a Harbor Freight uh, drill that my wife got me uh, about a year and a half ago. And this thing's awesome. Not exactly on center, but I don't exactly care.
Okay. And give it a test fit. Perfect. All right. So, um, of course, I've got to actually fit this in there. And I've got this thing going on here, which is going to have to go. So let me unscrew that. All right, there we go. So we have our nine to one ballon in a container. Happy times. Now we got to hook something up and get it tuned. I'm gonna go put this up and then once I put it up, I'll, I'll show you what I did. So uh, I'll, we'll be back in just a moment. All right, so here's the uh, little nine to one ballon. And I've got my wire going up to the antenna. Well, this is the antenna wire. And I mounted this up a little higher because I, I put enough wire on it that it could kind of droop. Um, I don't mind that. It's actually kind of a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Um, so it kind of droops below the eave there, which is fine. And I don't have a... Um, I don't have a uh, counterpoise on it yet. I just thought I would just just put it here and see what happens. All right, so the antenna is gonna to be totally workable on multiple bands uh, because of the tuner, or because of the uh, ballon on it. Um, however, uh, the coaxial cable that I have for it is simply too short. Um, and that's a bummer because it's only short by about 10 feet, but 10 feet too short is the same as 100 feet too short. Now I've got this awesome uh, Amphenol uh, cable here and I got about 45 or 50 feet of it at a garage sale for uh, $3. And the reason I did, I got, I got such amazing name brand cable at such a low price is because it's 75 ohm TV cable. And, <laughs> and that, that mm -hmm. this thing is crimped on there so hard. It's like somebody took a pair of pliers and just, <laughs> um, Crimpers are expensive, but there's no excuse for that. Gosh. Anyway, uh, so uh, it is my goal to put an, uh, a PL259 connector on this somehow and use it in the tuner. The other alternative is to take the uh, connector out of the tuner and just solder this in. Um, I was trying to avoid doing that, but um, I don't really care that much. I just want to get this working. And yeah, it's 75 ohm. Who cares? Uh, 50 ohms perfect, yes, but perfection is not the goal. Uh, getting on the air is on the goal, and I guarantee you this is going to get on the air just fine. And these are too small. This is going to get on the air uh, just fine. In fact, a lot of hams will take a 75 ohm cable and use it without even thinking twice. It does present a slight SWR, higher SWR to the radio. Um, the worst can happen is a 1.5 to 1. And remember, we're using a tuner. This thing is not going to be carrying 50 ohms. This is going to be carrying anywhere from 15 to 90 ohms. So this is actually might even be better. Um, this will be at, at 90 ohms. This will be carry uh, less of a mismatch than 50 ohm cable would. So it doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm going to see if I can get a PL259 connector on this. If I even have any, uh, it looks like I used them all recently. Uh, let me see if I have anything uh, I have a twist on BNC connector and a PL259 adapter um, not sure this will work but we'll give it a, a shot here man look at that braid on that isn't that just beautiful this is good cable I'm actually really excited about that um, now the question is can I get the uh, of course, and I know I need to take care of the center conductor, but the question is, can I get this on there even? And it's thread. 
starting, I think. Yeah, it's threading over the that, so that's good. Should have cut more off of that. Gonna cut a little bit more of the sheath the sheath off of it. And I'm guessing I need to cut to around here, which is about here. So we'll cut off the shield. All right, let's see if this stays on there. <laughs> All right, so now I need to check continuity from Back to back here. No continuity. All right. Now do I have continuity to the other end? That's also what I need to know. This is not in there that firm, but we can fix that with some creativity and check for continuity on the shield. And, and there's continuity on the shield. See if there's continuity on the center conductor. There is. All right, it was successful. Now I've just got to get this to stay on there without coming off because I think it would pull off fairly easily, especially if I let gravity do its job. And so for that is the next step is making a tuner that we can tune up this antenna with. So we will come back to that in the next video. So make sure you stay tuned. And um, well, I should, I should say the next video in a future video, that is the next step. Uh, I'll be working on that as I can, as I'm available to do so. And I have the energy and the time and, uh, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And if you have any comments or questions or criticisms or ideas or anything else, post them below. Uh, if you've watched it this far, you are definitely uh, as deluded and are enjoying this as much as I am. Um, no, you're not deluded. You're amazing. And I appreciate your watching. So uh, click like subscribe and uh, you'll get the next piece where we are going to build a tuner to tune this thing through the bands. Thanks for watching. See you next time.